Ministries International. Today we are having a sit down with our Bishop Dr. Sheldon D. Newton along with Pastor Randy Smith. Let's all welcome our host for this morning, Mr. Trevor Strawn Jr. youth actually um, who's part of the uh, youth department and he's um, studying mechanical engineering at the University of Michigan let's all give him a round of applause On my right is Bishop Selden D. Newton, and on my left is Pastor Randy Smith. So before we begin, I'm going to ask each one of them to introduce themselves, tell us a little bit about them. So start with Pastor Selden, uh, Bishop Selden. Well, hello everybody. I'm Bishop Selden D. Newton, Senior Pastor of Jesus Christ Center Ministries International and um, International Traveling Minister. I'm so honored and glad to be here today. My name is Pastor Randy Smith. I prayed um, those questions be some good questions. <laughs> yeah, good. Okay. Um, start with the first question. Alex. Um, why do bad things seem to happen to good people? Now, if any one of you want to ask, start answering the question. Well, when God uh, first created mankind, um, he created everything that was good. Um, mankind, however, yielded to a foreign spirit, to an evil spirit, to an angel who had rebelled against the authority of God. And it caused the catastrophes that we see in the world today. Um, God's will is that people live in health, live a good, purposeful, wonderful life. Um, but there is an enemy that's bent on destroying humanity. And so while many people always like to blame everything on the sovereign God, the truth of the matter is, that there is also a devil, and that the devil is behind every murder, um, every rape, every form of wickedness. Um, and uh, once he gets anybody to listen to him, um, he can do a whole lot of damage. Um, we can't believe God for divine protection, thank God. But that is really the reason why a lot of bad things happen to good people, because there is a devil in the earth trying to destroy mankind. I agree. I agree as, as well. Um, the second question is kind of related to that one as well. Um, it says, if God is real, how come he is allowing all these things, bad things to happen? So maybe a little elaborate, elaborate on that. It's not that God is um, 
allowing it to happen, a lot of bad things in the sense that God is responsible. When the sovereign God gave authority in the earth to man, man became responsible for the choices he or she makes. And when man yielded that authority to Satan, it gave him a certain amount of authority in this earth realm. Um, in 2 Corinthians 4, 4, he's called the God of this world, which means that he has authority here. And until the time runs out that um, God, the time lease that God had given man or given Adam runs out in the earth, Satan has rights here. Now, of course, the born-again believer has authority over him, but that does not take away the fact that he has certain rights here to do damage and to do damage if he gets people to listen to him. So it's not that God is letting the devil have his way. It's that man has placed humanity and even the world in a position where unless man invites God in, God's hands are tied. Just like what the bishop said, uh, I just could give you an example. Um, God operate, God, he operate by laws. His laws. And um, let's say, for instance, I will bring up um, this example, um, September 11th with um, the terrorist attack. Um, let's take, for instance, now, God had to suspend some laws so those planes don't go into the building. Now, if he did that right, he have to do all other planes, but even in that vicinity, he'll have to he'll have to stop all of that just for that. So, in other words, he couldn't just intervene per se because of the devil still run things, but he couldn't intervene because he would have to break his law if he stopped that law of gravity. If he just stopped that law for those planes going into the building, what would have happened is he would have to stop all it all, and he's just not that type of God. So in other words, um, we have a part as believers, we have a part to play. And we have our laws, the laws that he give us in the word of God. And we have what we call spiritual laws. So so when like bad things do happen, when bad sometimes it's just it's us sometimes at, at, at fault. Whereas, you know, then you have a devil who run and loose, but God can intervene because even September eleventh, he still speaks to some people. He speak to the people in the building. So, you know, divine protection. If I may add something to that, um, when I spoke of how man yields himself to the adversary, and that causes him to be able to do damage, even in a situation like that, those guys who flew the planes into those buildings were listening to the devil, you see? so. Um, the Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 2 and verse uh, 2 that Satan works in the, the children of disobedience. Yeah. So if a person is his child, um, like all of us used to be until we received Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior, um, once a person belongs to the devil, he can influence them to do his will. Yeah. You see? And so it is not that God is doing these things is that there's a devil loose and man is listening to him. Yeah, and, yeah, and uh, of course we have free will, so we yes. won't override that. Right? Yes, so, amen. We come right back to the law. <laughs> yeah. He will not override yeah. a man free will. That's a part of his laws. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, um, the next question. Um, how do we discern good people from bad? Or like, how do we know people are for us rather than against us? How do we know if people is for us? Yeah, you know, like uh, if you're trying to make, you know, trying to make friends, right? Uh -huh. How do you know they're really your friend and not just trying to, you know, okay, plot against you? Uh, those type things, right? Well, anyway, that, that, that brings me to, um, uh, that's a good question. Yeah, very good. That's a very, very good question. Very good. Very good. <laughs> you know, uh, I never thought of it until you said that just now, right? Um, how I look at people. Um, I look at people with um, 
you see these here? They, um, they wings. So everybody's angel to me. Now, when they, everyone is angels. So I mean, and when someone, on my job, there were people who, um, who um, robbed me, let's say, um, took um, what, what, what belongs to me. And, um, and um, when they take it, it's like water off a duck's back to me. That um, I know God still have me. And because he still have me, I don't even look at them different. I don't look at them different. Because I learned so much about love in this place. In JCCMI that um, I look at them just different. I know how to deal with them. When it comes down to discerning and, and, and so forth, like I say, um, everybody to me is angel. They show me different. I still wouldn't retaliate and do the same like what they did to me. I wouldn't do the tooth for tooth and the tat for that. I wouldn't do that. You know, now that's me only because the love of God is shared abroad in my heart. Now, it could be shared abroad in your heart too because you could say, Pastor Randy, that easy to say. But it's not easy because I had to develop in this now. Mm -hmm. This didn't come overnight, but I developed in it. And just going through the word of God, Father God, this person offend me. What do I need to do? And he will carry me right back to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And I could read that, what love is and so forth. And I know what his words say in Matthew that um, if um, somebody um, offend you, what to do? Um, those who despitefully use you, what to do to them and so forth. So that's how I deal with it. I, um, when it comes down to deserting, um, I know, but I still walk in love. All right, I'm going to approach it from another angle now. Um, I'm going to approach it from the friendship angle. Um, someone said, if someone shows you who they are, believe them. Um, I believe that, um, yes, you should think the best of every person, but not be naive that if they show you they can't be trusted, you still trust them. Um, people say love is blind. I don't believe that. Um, I believe that love causes you to see. Oh, yeah. All right? And um, while I will remain friendly to everybody, and that's what he was, Pastor Randy was talking about, I will not let everybody be my friend. Sure. You see? I will be friendly. But I won't let everybody be my friend. Yeah. Everybody cannot be my friend. No. I have a lot of acquaintances. Right. I have few friends. And this is because, um, you know, Jesus, and I'm going to use him as my pattern and my role model because he is. Jesus had different levels of discipleships. Mm -hmm. First of all, he had everybody. Mm -hmm. The 5,000 and everybody. Mm -hmm. Then, he had the 70 who were closer to him than the 5,000. These 70 he sent out to preach the gospel. But then he had the 12. And they were closer to him than the 70. But then he had three. Peter, James, and John. And they were ones who he took aside and taught things to that he didn't tell the others. And they were the ones who would carry to places like the Mount of Transfiguration. They were the ones he trusted more. So I believe that friendships go at various levels. Yeah. And I believe that your level of access to a person should be determined by your loyalty of heart to a person. So if I, um, for instance, after Jesus, my wife is my best friend. All right? Um, and some men may say that just to say things, but my wife is my best friend after Jesus, all right? And then I have other friends after that, but I don't have a whole lot of friends. And the reason why is because I'm now in my 50s, believe it or not. I know I don't look it. I know I look like I'm still in my 20s. Um, um, but... Um, and, 
I, I saw my sister looking just now to see if this was the right place to talk in. But I know I'm still in my 20s, look like, you know, but I'm in my 50s. And I have gone through a whole lot um, through the years with people. And in going through um, life with people, you get to understand that you have to de develop a discerning spirit. Yeah. And I'm not talking about the gift of discerning of no, spirits no. here. I'm talking about you have to learn how to weigh people carefully mm -hmm. and how to uh, watch people carefully. Mm -hmm. And for instance, if you want to be my friend, but you come and bad mouth Pastor Randy to me, mm -hmm. I know off the, fact, uh, off the bat, you cannot be a close friend to me. No. Because if you can do that to him, you can do that to me. You see? I look at things like that. I look at uh, um, who you associate with. And what's your company? Okay, who are you friendly with? And if you're friendly with people that I won't go to the show with, that I, you know, that I won't spend much time with, and if I could avoid them, I'll avoid them. Um, then I realized that I can't really trust you like that. Because if I tell you my business, I don't expect my business to go anywhere else. So it's a matter of learning to trust. And there are two sides to this. I will trust you until you prove to me you can't be trusted. But I will also test your trusting level. At times by on purpose saying certain things to you, and watching to see if it ever gets back to me. Mm. And if you talk on me, it usually does get back to me. <laughs> you know? So um, I also, and now this is one of the things that I really do. I also pray and ask the Lord to show me yes. a person's heart, to show me where they are, to show me what they're into, intentions. to show me their intentions, to show me if they could hurt me. To show me if they're gonna hurt my family. Um, so my my take on it is yes, I love everyone, and I do, but everyone cannot be trusted to be your friend yeah. or to be in your circle of influence. Amen. And so you have to be able to listen to the leading of the Lord as to who you allow to be close to you. And that even if some people are close to you, but they can hurt you, that the Lord would let you see the signs so that you can more kind of back off and protect yourself amen. before it happens. I hope that helps. Amen, amen. Yeah, it helps. Uh, uh, the next question is a kind of a, you know, like, it's different from friendship, of course, you know, uh, that's, is it okay to date as a teenager? Like, have any of y'all dated as a teenager before? Any of y'all? <laughs> I don't know why my learned colleague is asking me to answer that question, but um, dating is actually a part of one, a normal process um, in getting to know a person. Um, I believe that there's a difference between dating and courtship. Um, I believe that dating has to do with just getting to know a person. There's no real commitment. There's no, um, I'm your boyfriend, you're my girlfriend kind of thing. It's just a matter of getting to know the individual. Um, courtship goes further. Courtship is when you decide that yes, this is the one I believe God has for me. And um, therefore, I want to make a real commitment to this person that I will become their steady. Um, so, should Christians date, um, I would say that I don't see anything wrong with it. Um, I would say that I believe that age does play a, a factor in it. Um, and I believe that it's a matter of whether or not uh, with godly parents, if they can trust the individual that their son or their daughter is planning on dating. Um, let me throw this in just for good measure. I am a prayer. So if my daughter brings someone there, and you know, she's over age um, now, so 
if she plans to go with that person and I sense in my heart that um, that ain't for her, I will pray him out of her life. All right? And I will pray him out and the wife will pray him out. So you love two people praying him out. And one can chase a thousand to fly, you can chase ten thousand. The same goes for my son. Amen. If I see a Delala, we can pray, pray out. Amen. Um, so that they would end up with the poison God decide for them. So, um, should Christians date? I believe that's an individual decision. Um, but when you start to deal with courtship, you're now getting serious. Now, I must qualify that statement and I only have a couple minutes to answer it. Let me qualify that statement very carefully. If you profess to be a born again believer, you should not be dating or courting an unbeliever, Amen. according to scripture. Amen. All right? So let me settle that now. Uh, um, um, should Christians date a sinner? No. You're from two different camps. Yep. And you can try and kid yourself all you want. Yes. A person who is not into Christ, into everything else. Amen. All right? And so you have to decide. Um, the term is birds of a feather. Together. <clears throat> you should have two more minutes. Eh? Um, so, something to do with Bishop say about Christians. That um, unequally yoked, just being unequally yoked, that just ain't healthy. And um, I learned something. Um, I have, we, I mean, Terry, we had this friend who, um, who um, we used to have like Bible study. And um, this girl, she could, uh, she could interpret dreams and vision. It's amazing. And um, she was dating this um, a gentleman. So um, she, on the verge to get married too. So I remember her saying one time, said, boy, my spiritual mother have something to tell me. So knowing her situation, I just asked, I said, what about if your spiritual mother tell you um, this person is not for you, would you still go ahead and marry him? And she thought for, for a few seconds, and she looked at me and she tell me, said, yeah, she still would marry him. And they got married. And that was the first marriage would um, it end like in a month. Wow. It ended in a month. So you have to be careful when it comes down to Christian, if you are born again Christian, young people, and the person you dating is unequal. It, it just, it just uh, that's a disaster. Mm -hmm. Ready to happen. Let's uh, have the next question. This one's uh, basically, how can uh, I develop a stronger prayer life? Pray. <laughs> that's, that's how you develop a stronger prayer life. You pray. Exactly, yeah. You um, pray daily. You yeah. practice praying. Yeah. Um, David said he prayed, I mean, Daniel said he prayed three times a day. Um, David said seven times a day will I praise you. <laughs> Um, so it really is a matter of just learning how to talk to God. I believe that um, it's important that you learn how to be honest with God uh, when you talk to him. Don't ever tell God words you don't mean. Um, you're talking to the Almighty. Um, you're talking to the creator of heaven and earth, the sovereign. So be real with him and just talk to him from your heart because he knows it anyhow. Um, the other part of that is learn how to spend time reading your Bible a lot because you need to learn to talk to God based on his language, okay? You need to talk to God based on what his word has to say. Uh, prayer really is returning his word back to him. That's what prayer is, real prayer. So um, what I did, and I'm just going to talk here from uh, where I came from. Um, I came, um, I got saved in a Baptist church while attending a Baptist church. And I just started to learn to just to talk to God and let God know how much I appreciated all he did for me on Calvary. And um, I fell in love with the Savior, deeply in love with the Savior. And so I just learned how to talk to him. And my prayer life um, was a combination of 
learning how to just share my heart with him based on things that I was going through, things that I was experiencing, as well as going to prayer meeting at our Baptist church. Now, um, you know, a lot of people today look like they don't really understand how to pray in prayer meeting. Um, because when I was a part of the prayer meeting, the prayer meeting was not a proper science meeting. It was prayer meeting. Um, we didn't get together so someone could come and prophesy to the different people. We got together to pray. And you got down on your knees before Almighty God and you prayed, you know. Uh, and we call it sweet hour of prayer for a reason. You came to pray. So um, you listen to the older prayers around you and stuff, and you learn how to coast in prayer. You know, there are different kinds of prayer, of course. And by the way, uh, if you haven't gotten it yet, get my book on how to pray yes. and get results. You'll learn the different kinds of prayer. There are different kinds of prayer. But when it came to um, learning how to coast in prayer, and I don't know if y'all know what I mean by coast in prayer. Maybe a lot of the young people don't know what I mean by coast in prayer. Right. All right? Okay. But there are times when I talk to God, if I'm, I'm going through something, I'll just say, Lord, um, I need your help with something. And I, I need your wisdom with something. And I'll say, Lord, so-and-so did me wrong. And God, yes, I know, according to the word, I must forgive him. But I must tell you, it hurt. Yes. You see? I don't hide that from him. Right. I don't just act like, oh, I can't forgive him and go off on no, I, I tell him, it hurt. And I said, now I forgive them. But now I need you to heal me. And now I need you not just to heal me, but show me how to deal with this person now. Mm. You see? Uh, um, yes, so, um, I was young and um, I got some money sent to me from someone who'd been blessed from my ministry. Um, a young man um, used to bring cars in. I gave him my money, which was rare to me to have that kind of money. And he took it to get me a car, but the car never came. Then I came to find out he spoke, and this is why I say, you know, you be careful what you say about people because it can get back to them. He was a friend of a lawyer, and he didn't know the lawyer was my friend. And the lawyer told me, he told her, I ain't getting him no car. You see? Well, that hurt. Because at that time, my family and I really needed that car. And so, um, I had to fight all kinds of evil thoughts. I had to fight the devil. I had to fight the flesh. I had to fight in my mind. <laughs> and I asked God to forgive me. But now how, how am I going to deal with this person? You see? And I had to treat the person as if everything was cool. And that's fine to say you're going to do that until you see him. You see? And so the Lord had to give me wisdom and show me how to deal with them. But I'm saying that in relation to my prayer life. If I'm hurting, I would tell the Lord, that really hurt me. You see? Um, if, I'm, if I'm going through something with regard to my flesh, I would tell the Lord, I need your help to deal with this. I don't know how to deal with this. You see? Um, if I'm dealing with a financial matter, and I'm wanting to disclose some of my business with someone, I'd say to the Lord, uh, uh, Lord, do you think it's wise that I go and talk to so-and-so? Mm -hmm. Or I would say, Lord, who should I talk to? Mm -hmm. Now, you're dealing here with coming to a place of walking with God. Yes. You see, it's more than just you praying for a prayer meeting or praying um, as a religious exercise. It's you literally being mindful that he is actually there yeah. for you to talk to. Amen. Regardless of what you're dealing with. Then, like I said, I got among the older people, and now it was time to learn how to coast in prayer. And so when they pray, and you know, they'll start off, of course, similar to how, let's say, someone like in our congregation who knows how to coast in prayer it, it, it is, is Tiffany Clark. Now, I put her name on this one, but she knows how to coast in prayer. You see? And Fred Clark knows how to coast in prayer. Uh, coasting in prayer is when you start off just praying, but the, you let the Lord carry you up. You let the Holy Ghost carry you up. And, and so um, I, I, I would pray. Um, sometimes I would be praying and I would just start off, Father God, I thank you for this day. 
I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for keeping my family and I safe throughout the night. I thank you for waking us this morning with sound minds and with healthy body. Now that's my normal way of praying. Father, I thank you for the government. I thank you for those who are in authority in this land. I pray in Jesus' name that you grant them wisdom to lead this land right. And God deal with their hearts like you dealt with the heart of Nebuchadnezzar uh, um, when you wanted his will, your will to be done. I pray like that. But then I can go to now, Father, I bring JCCMI before you. I bring every elder. I bring every minister. I bring every partner. I bring every member. I bring their families. And then I, I, I feel myself starting to go now, you see? And time may start to coast. Father, I pray for every one of them. I pray, and I start to call some people by name. I pray for them now, in Jesus' name. God, you know what they're dealing with. God, you know what they're going through. I pray in Jesus' name you grant them a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you. Let the eyes of them, and I pray, and then you begin to close. Oh, Father, I pray. I, and all of a sudden, it's like the Holy Ghost just carries you, and you start to find yourself praying beyond, sometimes beyond your intellect. And then you end up going over and, and praying in the spirit and praying in other tongues and so forth. And it just grows and grows. And the more that you practice by praying every day and every night, the more that you practice, you develop a prayer life. <clears throat> now, you just asked me a question, sir, about dating. Um, I would encourage you, even people, when they're talking about dating, to learn to pray. Mm -hmm. Ask God if you should be involved with this one or with that one. Mm -hmm. Pray. You know, uh, and let go, and listen, when God show you, because don't ask him to show you, and you don't want to know. Because if you ask him, show me this person heart, he can let them act the fool at a time when they ain't even expect you to. And you can see it. And you can, don't deny what you see. Remember, if someone show you who they are. Amen. Amen. A key practice. It does take practice. Um, my prayer life, not like Bishop on Abby just um, my code says I have I have a folder with prayers and I will pray them in English and then when I done finish with that prayer, then I'll go in tongues. Now um what I does is I early in the morning, you know, I feel like um I feel like um, I am. Um, I beaten the sister. Why is everybody asleep? <laughs> Only me and go out awake. <laughs> so, so I like to get that in there. <laughs> uh, that's how I pray. But um, the key is practice. Now you have to practice. Um, a prayer life is not just going to fall on you. Right. You can have to want that. You have to desire that. Um, I remember the former church. The, the former church where me and Terry come from. I remember um, the pastor. Ask somebody if you want a prayer life, um, come, come up and all of that. And he prayed for them. Maybe some of them slay on the spirit and all. So a friend of ours, I asked him like a month ago, he said, your prayer life change? No. See, the hand laying, it have to be more than that. It doesn't have to be something you want. Yeah. It, it doesn't have to be something you want. So practice, Diki. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, of course, uh, you can't just expect it to just have somebody put your hand on it. Yeah, that's falling in like draft now. No, you have to work yeah, for it. Yeah, yeah there's a desire. Um, okay, this other, uh, another question. How do you deal with depressing thoughts? I had one depressing thought one time. My God. <laughs> the wife teased me first because, remember I always say everybody have wings, right? And it was someone right in here. Oh, they depressed me. And I had to walk from my house um, to the corner. And I was trying to figure where those thoughts come from. Because I don't think evil of people, Pastor Jen, I don't think evil. And the thought come up and all that, like, so I try to rebuke it. And the thought, like, it gets stronger. I, I do the tongues. It got stronger. Say, so this thing don't work, eh? <laughs> so, <laughs> and lo and behold, I went to Bishop and says to someone in here, Mama just going to apologize. Wow. And you know that, you know. You know that. So when the depressing thought came, 
I mean, based upon this, um, somebody did me something. Um, I went to the person and I apologized. I was telling them I was thinking evil thoughts, but please forgive me. And pro is gone, so that was my key. I just had to confront the, po the problem, confront it, and then um, everything was well, and then um, I don't cry much. I just cry it out, me, just cry it out. And that was, that was it. <laughs> Um, you have to look at the reason behind the depression. Um, there are some people who are depressed for clinical reasons. There can be a chemical imbalance, um, and in that kind of case, they would need to go to um, the medical field, um, to a psychiatrist or a psychologist and get help. Um, then there are people who get depressed because of pressure. Um, um, they go through things and um, the pressures of life, um, like in this time right now, talking about the pandemic, um, there are a lot of people who are very depressed because they've not been working for a long time and their bills are piled up and they really, many of them may have very little to eat, so they really are struggling with, with life. And we saw cases of that where some people have even committed suicide the pressure of things just get to them. Um, in cases like that, um, it would be good to find a counselor, it would be good to find a pastor, uh, it would be good to find someone that you can just pour your heart to and let them know what you're dealing with and what you're going through so that you can get some help, you know? Um, then there is the depression that comes because of struggles in a relationship. I mean, you know, the husband and the wife are having issues, the children are an issue, um, and so all of that pressure comes on and the man feels like the woman is constantly putting him down, the woman feels like the man is never supportive of her. Um, all of these kind of things can cause, cause pressure. You're um, at home, you're at work, and you're, oh, that's all what's on your mind. Um, there can be depression that comes as a result of um, peer pressure. Um, a lot of students go through that, where in school, uh, uh, um, they are literally, um, what do you call that term? Um, bully, you know, in, in various forms, and the pressure is on. Um, in every particular situation, and this is something we need to remember, for every problem, there is a solution. Now, just because you haven't found the solution doesn't mean that there's not a solution. There is a solution for every problem. You need to um, ask God to show you the solution. Perhaps it is to talk to somebody. If it is, then you need to talk. Perhaps it is to go and speak with a professional counselor. Um, then you need to go and speak with a professional counselor. Maybe it's something going on in your brain and medication can help. Um, perhaps it is a situation with your spouse. You need to talk to either a pastor or you need to talk to a counselor. Um, be very careful when you go into stuff who you talk to. Um, you need to talk to inform people, all right? Um, for instance, I... <laughs> And this is going to seem a little off, but I'm trying to get the point across. Uh, yesterday I uh, was passing a particular plaza where some guys would be out on the road, some guys out on the road talking and saying they're preaching. Um, it's not the gospel. Um, <laughs> but anyhow, the guy who was preaching, he said, you know what they're doing when you're go, trying to go away and they, pu they push that? thing up in your nose, they are putting a chip in there. And I said to myself, I say, you know, it's one thing when you preach it, but dear God, when you don't preach ignorant, you know? <laughs> At least make sure you got your facts together. You know, too? Yeah. They only swarm in your nose. <laughs> that, that don't have a chip. All right, so um, I, I believe it's important that when you need help, you find people who have the knowledge you yes, need yes. and the wisdom you need. 
uh, um, that will help you prove whatever you're going through. Now, let me say this here for the record. Everybody in here and everybody listening to me goes through things. None of us are exempt from the issues of life. Okay? So, a lot of times when you're going through, you tend to think you're the only one. Other people have it once. You just don't know. All right? So don't be a person who decides to fall up and say, all right, I'm just going to end life, and I'm just going to kill myself, and that's that. Because now you're going to end into bigger problems. Thank you. All right? Yes, yes, yes. What you need to do is find someone informed who you can speak with to get the wisdom you need to handle your situation. All right? And I can go into a little more detail, but I, I will hold for now because of time. I fought that for a while. I fought with depression for, for years. And God got me through it because I found um, an older saint in the yes. Lord who I was able to go and confide in step by step mm -hmm. and walk through it until I came out. And thank God, he brought me up. Amen. Amen. Um, we out of time? Okay. Um, well, of course, um, as, as Bishop said, you know, everybody goes through stuff, and stuff you're going through, of course, somebody else has been through it too, so, you know, you always ask them how they got through it, you know, or somebody who might have more knowledge than you, you know. Um, related to that, to that question, everyone was asking about somebody having issues in areas, but they don't want to share with, with people. How you could deal with that? Not want to share what they're dealing with. Um, my wife, um, I, 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 she learned this phrase, I think, around her workplace, but when she said it, it's something that stuck with me for years now. What's personal is universal. Again, I think that whenever people are going through things, you somehow tend to think you're the only one going through it. Um, now, let's say, and let's talk to talk, all right? Um, Let's say that you are dealing with something like pornography. Let's say you're dealing with loss. Um, a lot of time when you're going through that, um, you can say, tend to think that, a oh boy, if the church people know what I do, and God help me, if Bishop them know, they must be a cast a demon out of me. Well, just because you're having um, um, sexual thoughts or sexual desires, doesn't mean that you have a demon. As a matter of fact, God puts sexual desires in you, all right? And as you develop, um, whether you're coming up from a teenager or whatever, you're gonna find those desires there. They're being latent in you from the time you were born. Um, as a matter of fact, um, what we used to play when we was children, didn't we used to play Dolly House? Uh, and boyfriend, girlfriend, you know, and stuff. It's because it is in us. Um, we are not just, <laughs> the literature is laughing, we are not just um, spiritual beings. We are also sexual beings. God made us that way, you see? And it is normal to have sexual feelings. That's normal. Now, where it becomes abnormal is when we allow um, those feelings to control us yeah. instead of we controlling them, True. you see? But as we grow and as we develop, um, those sexual feelings grow with us. And uh, you have to deal with them. True. Now, you know, I can decide um, if I'm going through it like I, 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 when I was a teenager, and I started experiencing those kind of feelings, I didn't have a father in my life who I could go talk to and say, hey, Dad, um, what in the world is this? <laughs> I used to look at Sister Jen in church 
singing and all I used to say, boy, that's my sister in the Lord. Now I look at that sister dead in church and I ain't thinking that way no more. No. Well, how are you thinking, son? Well, you know. Son, tell me, you know. Yeah. Tell me, son, son, daddy, you know, you know. Uh, um, and so um, I'm noticing her shape now. Um, you know. Mm. And it's kind of hard for me to concentrate on the Lord. You know? I, 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 I didn't have that kind of person in my life to talk to like that. So I confided in another brother because I was having struggles. And yes, I was praying a lot. And yes, I was like Pastor Randy say, I was speaking in tongues and everything. But their feelings wasn't going nowhere. And so I went and I spoke with, and I was scared. Oh, I was scared to talk to him. I really thought he was going to tell me, you got a demon. That's what I was expecting him to say. I was not afraid. And, but I went and talked because I really needed help. I was struggling. And I said to him, I said, listen, this is what I'm dealing with. This is what I'm going through. And he made it so he caused me to, you know, you take a fresh breath. He said, everybody goes through that. And then he spoke with me and give me some wisdom. And through the years, I learned. And then, you know, um, you tend to think that, um, a lot of times, you tend to think that you're the only one. All because you're not taught that it, you're gonna have feelings as a part of growing up. Now, you have to realize that you're gonna have those feelings and you have to control them. Now, let's go to something else though. If you're a man, and you're having feelings for a man, then that's a demon. <laughs> or you on that internet watching something you shouldn't be watching. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or you have people saying things to you that they shouldn't be saying, and you accepting it. Stop letting people define you. Yeah. Let God define you. Amen. If you got a penis, you're a man. <laughs> if you got the other thing, you're a woman. Right. If you ain't got none, we gotta pray. You're a demon. <laughs> Alright? <laughs> 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 they all eat you. But Pastor Rocky said you're an alien. Alright? So uh, uh, you have to know how to how you have to realize that there's a whole lot of stuff coming down the pipe right now. Um, even in relig even in the um, school systems, people are being told you're either a man or you're a woman or you're this other thing. There is no other thing. No. All right? You're either a man or you're a woman or you're confused. That's it. That's just the way it is. All right? So don't let people put no, no title on you. If you know what you got, that's what you is. Settle that. And if you're a man, you should only be desiring you should only have desire for a member of the opposite sex. If you're a woman, you should only have desire for a member of the opposite sex, not the same sex. It's that plain and that simple. All right? So I encourage you all, and particularly you all young people, hear me. And I know we're not just talking to our young people. We're talking to people. Listen to me. Stop fooling with pornography, and in particular, Stop watching things that you know are contrary to the word of God. All right? Because you watch two women together saying, oh, I like that. Evil spirits mm -hmm. will get a hold of you. Yeah. You watch a, a men treating women like men. Going parks, they shouldn't be going. Evil spirits will get a hold of you. Mm -hmm. You watch men together or boys together, evil spirits will get a hold of you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Watch what you watch in. All right? Ask God to free you and help you to walk away Amen. from pornography. Amen. It is no good for you, period. Amen. It's an ungodly, demonic, mm -hmm. evil system Satan has set up to trap your spirit, your sexual desires and pull you into something called lust. All right? evil loss, evil desires. Yeah. So stay away from it. That's my admonition.
Um, ask for the question. Ask the question again. Uh, it was uh, basically a person. Uh, how to deal with stuff without really, you know, sharing it? Like right, right. Like if I'm like if I'm going through something. Yes. Um, if I like if I'm going through something, um, you have to find a person like Bishop said that big, um, somebody older. You have to look for um, that person who you know that when you um, ask them, you know, not just between your two and how to deal with that. And that person have to be honest. And um, I'll be honest with you. The first time when I realized that, that was when I came here. Um, I had a bishop and a pastor, they was open. And they just kind of shared, like, like, oh, you all could say these things, say, you know? And that's where I learned that I could confide in Eden Bishop whatever I going through. But you didn't have the father figure at home. So it's really hard for a person, for Bahamian, for a black person, even for a Christian, to share things with people. Because you have to really know the individual. You really have to know the individual. So I, I would say um, look for someone who you could confide in, someone who know more. And I'm and I'm on and, and go to them and get that counsel. Yeah, you do one more question. Now. Um, uh, this one uh, related to the one when we was talking about prayer. It'd be like uh, suppose I don't find reading boring. How can I develop the habit of reading? Is it, you mean suppose you do find reading boring, or yeah, if you find reading boring. Do you, you know you want to let's let's um let's qualify that statement because what i found out is a lot of people who may say they don't like to read they like to read mm -hmm. it's what they read mm -hmm. um <laughs> people some people won't pick up a book but you send them a long message on whatsapp and they read every bit Maybe that's what we need to do. Maybe we need to set out the whole chapter of the Bible on what's up. But then they won't read it. And the reason they won't read it is because, and I'm going to say a statement that may seem strange, but it's the truth. The Bible is Satan's worst nightmare. Amen. Yeah, you get the whole of this, is the biggest thing the devil fears. Yeah. He fears this more than anything. So, um, you know, um, when people say they don't like read, but then they'll say, you read the punch this morning? Or they'll say, you see that story in the Guardian? Mm -hmm. Or they'll read the whole obituary. Mm -hmm. They'll read about people they don't even know. And say, mm, my, 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 going so young. You know? So you look at that and you say, it isn't that they don't like reading. It's what they read. And then the question becomes, well, why is it such a struggle to read the Bible? It's because the devil don't want you in that book. He fears it. So how do you develop the habit? You do it anyhow. You make a decision that from now on, I'm going to read my Bible. And let me tell you how, how tricky you have to get with this in order to develop this. You have to say, before I cut the TV on, before I cut on my computer to play my game or to watch my whatever, I can read my Bible and read your chapter. I'm going to read at least a chapter a day. I'm going to read at least a half a chapter a day. I'm going to read whatever amount a day. And I'm going to do it first day. Yes. Make it your priority. And when your mind starts to see that you serious, mm -hmm. for instance, when I wake up first thing in the morning, my phone is there. I pick up my phone. And you click it on. Now, you know what comes to my mind right away? Boy, you see all the messages you get on WhatsApp? Go see what that is. But see, I have a Bible app one here. Yeah. So what do I do? I click onto my Bible app and I read scripture for the day. You see? 
and I do that voice. Then I go look at the messages. You see? And you have to do that. You have to make a, it's like what Pastor Randy said about early. You develop it with practice. You just got to make up your mind, you, this is what you're going to do. This is how you're going to live. <laughs> and if you make up your mind that this is what I'm going to do, I'm telling you, piece by piece, all of a sudden, when you decide not to read your Bible, you can't sleep good. And you say, I read today. Yeah. And you'll have a habit develop. As a matter of fact, I, I end up with this because I know our time is just about gone. Um, listen, anything you practice every day for six weeks starts to become a habit. Amen. Yeah. Yes. So could you at least give yourself six weeks to read a chapter a day? Come on, man. I know you could do that. Every day. Bishop, you mean on weekends too? Every day. But just six weeks, and you'll develop a habit of reading. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I pray that you were enlightened, that you were blessed. Let's give it up for our host. I'm glad that you have joined us for this time in God's Word today. And we want you please to go ahead if you want to see other videos coming to you from Jesus Christ Center Ministries International, subscribe to this particular page. Like us on Facebook at Jesus CCMI. And by the way, if you have prayer requests, please email us. Our email address will be on the screen in just a moment. Email us and let us know how we can pray for you. Until we meet together again around God's word, remember, Jesus Christ is Lord and divine love flows.